Thank you for joining us today and welcome to this webinar session entitled No More Basic Training for Military Personnel and Civilian Partners. I'm Kenya Fairley with the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence. We're hosting this webinar today in partnership with No More as part of No More Week 2015. Participants will learn about the history of No More and ways to use the No More campaign as part of your domestic violence and sexual assault awareness activities and events on base or installation or at a military office. Our presenter, Jill Morris, is No More's DV and SA field liaison. Jill has been working in the victim's rights field since 1994. She began her career working for the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services. She also served as the Director of Public Policy for the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Director of Communications for the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape. In 2006, Jill won the Amnesty International Human Rights Award for her work on the Violence Against Women Act. I'm now going to pass it over to Jill, and she'll take it away. Thank you so much, Kenya, and thank you to the Resource Center for partnering with us on this webinar. I'm very excited to see so many people logged on. I've met some of you at the National Sexual Assault Conference last year and hope to see you again this year. And we've gotten a lot of interest from military personnel about No More. So we decided to have this webinar and call it basic training, a little pun there for those of you in the military. Um, so to talk about what No More is and to show you a little bit about how you can use No More. And then a little bit later in the slideshow, I'm going to turn it back over to Kenya so that she can talk about resources. Just so you can see who I am, I'm a real person. I hate having my photo taken, but I just wanted you to have a face to put with a name. Uh, Kenya, thanks for that wonderful introduction of my bio. I've been working in the field a long time and I'm very excited to be a part of No More. My colleague, Emma, is also on the webinar and she's going to be working in the chat room that we have. So if you have any very specific questions or general questions about No More, you can post those in the chat and Emma will try to answer those for you. I'll also um, be answering some of those as they come up and we will have a question and answer session. So Emma is there and also we'll be providing you with our email address so that if you want to ask something later on or offline, you can do that as well. So what are the basics of No More? A lot of questions we get is, what is No More? And a couple of people have seen the symbol um, maybe during a commercial on, a, on television or during a sporting event or seen a sticker on someone's car or they've heard someone mention it before. Maybe they've seen it on social media. So we're going to talk about what is it? Uh, and who is No More? Who's behind No More? How did this get started? I feel like everyone should know a little bit of the history of No More in order to see how it's actually engaged in our communities. And I'm going to provide a little bit of more information about how No More has been reaching communities, and that involves the general public, uh, high school and college campuses, um, members of the military have been doing No More projects since we launched uh, in 2013. So I talk a little bit about how we've reached out to the community. And then we'll get to the very specific things that are available to you. So what are some of the tools that No More is providing to you uh, to be able to hold a campaign to talk about the issues of domestic violence and sexual assault? And then we're going to, uh, Kenya is going to talk to you about some resources that are available to members of the U.S. Armed Forces, um, some great links, uh, hotlines, and other resources and research that may be of great value to you. So about No More, a lot of the information I'm going to talk about today is on our website, so you're welcome to go there and, and look through the website, but a little bit about our history and what we are. We're a public awareness campaign that's focused on domestic violence and sexual assault. What we want to do is engage the public in talking about these issues. Uh, we worked with the Avon Foundation back in 2013 and to do a study. And during that study, 60% of Americans said they either knew a victim of domestic violence or sexual assault or both. But two out of three of those had not really talked about the issue with their friends or their family um, or even in their workplace. So we decided that as a group, and I'm going to talk about who that group is in a minute, that we really needed to bring more attention to this issue. We really wanted to make this issue something that we talk about in the public, like we do with HIV AIDS or we do with drunk driving or we talk about breast cancer awareness. So we'd like the issues of domestic violence and sexual assault 
to be a prominent issue in our communities, in our households. We've all turned on the news or read an article about um, someone who may have shot their spouse and their family and themselves in these very tragic events or heard about um, a sexual assault that might have happened on a college campus. And so we want people to be able to use the no more symbol as a way to say, I care about this issue, I want to talk about these issues, and I want to engage my community, my workplace, my campus, and talking about how we can intervene and prevent these issues. So we launched officially in 2013, um, and we were supported by hundreds of national and local groups and by thousands of people who've gone on our website and our gallery, which I'll show you a little bit later, to stand up and say no more. And no more actually started as a conversation between most of the major, if not all of, uh, the National Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Groups. They all came together. We all came together back, way back in 2009 and said, you know, how can we all work together? What is the one thing that, you know, we all can do together to bring attention to not only what our individual organizations are doing, but bring the general public and bring in other members of our communities, such as the military, to, the, to this issue. And so uh, we, fo we found it no more. Um, as a public-private partnership, basically, to support the work that these organizations are doing. So we're kind of an umbrella. We're not our own nonprofit. We don't accept donations. All of the materials that you'll see today have been uh, provided pro bono or have been created by our partnership partner organizations. So talk about those organizations. Sorry, these uh, graphics are a little bit small. You can zoom in and take a look. So our executive committee members are folks who um, have helped fund some of the research that we've done, um, also getting the uh, No More Symbol out into the uh, corporate world. As you can see, the Allstate Foundation, um, Kaiser Permanente, Mary Kay, and Avon um, have been very uh, vocal on these issues for many years, and so they came on to um, help us launch the campaign, uh, both in their companies, but also to their customers and to their constituents and also to bring funding to the field to help support the work um, of many of our partners that you see on the left-hand side. And the steering committee, really the national organizations, and they help form what we do as a um, national organization, a national campaign, excuse me, um, to help us with um, activities around Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, inform us about what's going on with youth, with men who are survivors, um, policy issues. I mean, you see the National Domestic Violence Hotline on there, so we work closely with them. Uh, the YWCA, which is a huge organization um, that has um, offices all over the country. So we really partner with these organizations to get the word out and uh, also to help them um, bring more constituents to the services that they provide. So how is No More actually reaching our community? Well, this week is No More Week, and we've had a lot of activity via social media. We engage the public via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I think we might even have a Pinterest account. Uh, so we really like to engage people in social media. It's a great way to get information to people fast, but also one of the things that Emma and I do is we get messages from people who might need help. Like, where is there a local crisis center in my community? Or, you know, they might want to tell us their story or say, how do I get engaged with No More? So it's a really good way for us to engage the general public. There's also a great place for our partners uh, and those who are doing No More campaigns, including you all in the military, uh, to be able to show us what you're doing in your local community. So anytime anyone has a No More project, um, or an event or an activity, they can post it on our social media so that people in their community will know about it. Many of you might have seen our PSAs um, uh, on television, or if you've attended a professional football game this season, you might have seen the PSAs actually aired uh, during um, the games. And we also had a PSA announcement that aired during the Super Bowl. So I'll talk about that in a little bit, and I think we're going to try to show a couple of clips of those. 
We've also worked with uh, corporations to do research, so as I mentioned, the Avon research, uh, and also sponsorships for projects. Um, I'll kind of leak some information here that uh, we're working with Casa de Esperanza and some of our corporate sponsors to launch the No Mas campaign for the Latino community sometime later this fall. So, you know, make sure to sign up for our newsletter. Also, make sure to check our social media to, to learn more about the No Mas campaign. So those are really kind of our, our, our relationships with our corporate um, executive committee. There's also localized campaigns. I'm going to show you um, some pictures that will be more interesting than these slides of what people have done on a local level. Um, there's a great group here, and I'm in California, in Redding, California, and Shasta, um, at One Safe Place in Shasta has their own campaign where they use the No More Tools that we provide free on our website to create their own campaigns. So I'll show you a little bit about that. We also have some great statewide campaigns for those of you who are in Pennsylvania. I used to live there, so I feel like it's still part of my home. Um, it has a great campaign called PA Says No More, and they've really tailored that to be about their state um, and about the uh, resources and the activities that are going around in their state. We've also um, worked through Workplaces, which is the uh, corporate alliance. Uh, and you know our corporate sponsors work through workplaces about how they can educate their employees on the issues of domestic violence and sexual assault and how they can provide support to any of their employees who might be a survivor or might be in a current situation um, of domestic violence or sexual assault. We've worked on campus. We've had lots of campus groups. Um, Emma can probably tell, tell us more. Uh, over 100 and something campuses have launched their own No More campaigns to bring awareness to the issue on campus. And recently we started working with the documentary filmmakers from The Hunting Ground, which is a documentary that is now out that talks about campus sexual assault. Uh, those same um, documentary filmmakers uh, did a documentary a couple of years ago called The Invisible War, which talks about sexual assault and abuse in the military. So if you are not aware of that, you might want to look into that. Um, film as well. And also professional sports, as you'll see in a couple of slides. Um, we've been working with the NFL on some of the campaigns that they've been doing, and uh, they've been very gracious. We had a bunch of players step forward and say, hey, I want to get involved in this. And uh, they're getting involved not only in a national campaign, but they're getting involved in their local areas as well. Uh, so Together We Can is, is the, the theme of this week. Uh, every year during our launch birthday celebration, we have No More Week so that we can tell people about No More. Which, as we're telling you now, uh, we have a big social media campaign. People have events from all over the country. If you go to our website and you look under events, you can see th events that are happening not only this week, but throughout March and, uh, of course, as we come upon Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the activities that people will be doing around those um, campaigns as well. So really this is about how do we bring our communities together. And our community could be, could be your base, your installation. You might work at a VA facility. Um, or it could be the community that you live in, um, your neighborhood, or you know, your children's school. No More is really a big tent campaign where we engage everyone. So currently, a little bit of statistics, um, we have over 49,000 individuals who have signed up to get involved with No More. They've signed up with our newsletter. They get engaged with our social media. It's probably over that since I made this slide. Um, this past week we did what's called a thunderclap, which gets people engaged through social media and sends out a message to everyone uh, on their social media. And I think we reached 1.3 million people uh, with the No More campaign. Um, no More Week theme, uh, so we're very excited about that. We have almost 12,000 individuals and organizations that have downloaded the toolkit. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So that's a lot of individuals and organizations that are getting the No More word out there and are talking about these issues in their community. Um, almost 500 local, state, and national organizations have joined our allies. 
Um, you are welcome to um, go onto our website, and there's an ally section. I'm going to show you a picture of it in a second, where you can sign up to be an ally, and that automatically signs you up for a special newsletter list that tells you about the things that are going on with No More and our upcoming activities and campaigns and kind of what the latest news is behind No More and some of the uh, news from some of our partners and other allies and what the projects that they're doing. So we encourage you to sign up there as well. We have a gallery of survivors and allies and advocates that have spoken out. You can take your photo if you'd like and tell your story. You can hold up a No More sign. There's some great photos in there um, of people. We actually had one posted this week, I believe, of someone who actually got a No More tattoo. Uh, got the logo tattoo. I was like, that was real dedication. Um, so people have found interesting ways to uh, support the issue and become a part of the gallery of supporters. So we encourage you to do that as well. We're also very proud to say that we had 7.3 million views of the Super Bowl ad that aired during the NFL um, uh, games, uh, as well as, um, as I said, during Super Bowl Sunday. And on, it's on YouTube. I'm going to show you a little clip of that. Um, and you're welcome to you know, post that on your social media uh, as well. Uh, as, you know, we're, we're stunned at the number of people who've seen this ad. In fact, I have new neighbors who just bought the house next door. And when they came and introduced themselves, they asked me what I did. And I told them I worked for No More. And the husband's like, hey, I saw your ad on the Super Bowl. And I was so excited that, first of all, he even remembered that it was no more and that he remembered the ad. So we're really reaching people in many different ways and glad to see that, you know, even a new neighbor, you know, I say the word no more, and they recognize it. And we started talking about the issues. And they started talking to me that they have teenage sons and they're talking to them about healthy relationships. And that's really the whole point of no more is helping people have these conversations in their community. So I was very thrilled and kind of shocked by that happening to me just this past weekend. Okay, something more interesting than just words. These are some uh, screenshots of our videos, our PSAs that we have. We have several that are on both the YouTube channel and on our website. If you have time, you can go to our website and watch all of our ads. The uh, NFL players, uh, the Super Bowl ad, we're very thankful to NFL for putting that together and bringing attention to that issue. There's a 30-second and a 60-second uh, ad, as well as our celebrity PSAs. We also have another PSA called Speechless. And Speechless was um, filmed, it was kind of footage that was filmed while they were in the middle of the actors you know, saying their lines for the videos that we just saw, if you got to see them. And in the middle of filming that, they started talking about the issues with the director. One of the directors was um, actor Blair Underwood, and they started talking about sexual assault. And we started asking questions like, you know, what would you say if this happened to your friend? And, and a lot of them got really emotional about the issues, and we kept rolling the footage and then later asked them, you know, can we share your honest reaction to these issues? And they said yes, and so the speechless um, – PSA, when you watch it, at first you'll think, wait, where's the sound? But it really is to so show emotion around that some people, it's hard to talk about these issues. It's even hard to talk about it if you're an actor and you have a script to read, um, because this does happen to a lot of individuals. And we've had a lot of um, NFL players come forward and say, I'm a survivor. You know, this happened to me, or I watched, you know, my dad beat up my mom, or there was domestic violence in my family, or, you know, my my sister was sexually assaulted, and we've had people come forward and say that. Um, so it does happen to celebrities. This week we're very thankful that actress Anna Lynn McCord was on several national news channels talking about her story as a survivor and her support of the No More campaign. And what she really wanted was for young people to know that you can be a survivor of these issues and still be very successful and that there is help available. And she wanted people to know that there is no shame in what has happened to them and that it, has not, it wasn't their fault. So we're very thankful to these very public figures who come forward and talk about these issues. It, it can be very hard for just an everyday person to talk about it, but certainly someone who's a big, tough football player or you know, tough guy who plays on TV uh, to talk about these issues. We're very thankful for them for speaking out and bringing attention to the issue. Here's some of our posters from our print ads. 
um, you know, these are uh, actors um, that you might recognize. And, you know, this is no more if that doesn't happen to guys, because, of course, you know that men and boys are um, survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault as well, um, and that it's not just a women's issue. This is a, a community issue. This is a family issue. This is an issue about um, what goes on in, in uh, our relationships. And if you'll notice down at the very bottom, um, Kimmy, I'm going to try to use our little special tool that we have to highlight things. I hope you all can see my poorly drawn circle there. If you see down at the bottom of these posters, you'll see some logos from our partners, the Joyful Heart Foundation, One in Six. Um, you can use these posters and actually co-brand them with your installation if you have a specific um, you know, logo for your branch of the military or say you work for a defense intelligence agency or any, you know, anyone who is a nonprofit organization or a campus organization or a member of the military, if you wanted to co-brand these posters, that is available to you and it is for free. So we'll talk about where you go to get that information. So just notice that you can um, co-brand these uh, posters and as well the PSAs. If you notice at the end of the PSA it showed the Joyful Heart logo, um, we have, I believe, over 100 organizations that have um, co-branded the PSAs and show them on a national and a local level as well. So what's the next steps? How do I take action? How do I get all this great information? Well, I've talked about the toolkit a couple of times, so I'm going to tell you what that is and show you a little bit more. Um, you can follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter so you know what the latest things that are going on. Um, you can make a sign and post a photo to the gallery um, to show your support for these issues and to show that you're a no more supporter. You can share the PSAs on your social media. You can share them, you know, if you have videos in your lunch rooms or, you know, any, any, you know, rec rooms or whatever. If you wanted to show the PSAs there, you're welcome to. We also have a great blog that talks about these issues, and we've actually featured um, a military 5K um, from the Marines in Barstow um, was featured on our blog. So if you have activities coming up, and we, we would love to feature those both in social media and our blog posts. So the picture that you see at the bottom of the screen is um, a screenshot from our website. So if you go to the Take Action tab, it says Download Toolkit, and I'm going to show you what happens when you click on that soon. But you can also learn more about No More Week. You can post your events on our map. We actually have a wonderful map feature. Um, you can take the pledge. Um, and also down on the right-hand side is a place where you can sign up for our newsletter and also where you can join No More Allies. So there's lots of um, information on that Take Action tab. Um, there it is again. We love our Take Action tab. So this is where you can download the toolkit. They are free. Everything in the toolkit is free. You can download individual things. I also think you can download a zip file that will give you everything that you need. I don't know about firewalls when it comes to military uh, Internet access, so you might have a little bit of trouble with a zip file, but you can download individual things as well as the zip file that will give you everything. And I know this is very small print. I just kind of wanted to show you what it looks like in the table of contents. We have logos, we have flyers, we have postcards, we have posters, we have twibbons, if you know what a twibbon is, um, you know, email templates, social media posts, you know, how an action guide, how you can start an event, um, the different types of events that you can do. Um, we're really open source, so this is, you know, we let you kind of decide what's most appropriate for your community, what you feel most comfortable with. I know some of our campus organizers have been really creative um, our group in Pennsylvania actually had a, a state legislature day where they went to the state legislature to lobby on some legislation that affected um, child sexual abuse survivors. There was a statute of limitations um, for reporting crimes against children, and they wanted to get rid of that statute of limitations. And they actually made no more blue donuts that looked like the symbol, we thought that was the most clever thing ever, and went to every state legislature and gave them a blue donut and talked about no more. And then that opened the door to a conversation about their pieces of legislation. So have fun. We love calling it the blue donut. At first we thought people were making fun of us, but who doesn't love donuts? And so it gets a, it's a good way to kind of open the conversation. On the right-hand side you'll see a, a bus 
stop poster of Miss Mariska Hargitay, one of our great supporters. Great supporters. Um, this is in uh, Redding, California, uh, one safe place, as you can see. Um, their logo is they've co-branded. Whoops, I'm not very good with this thing. Um, they've co-branded down at the bottom with a joyful heart and no more, um, and put their crisis line on the poster. And they have got it put up on their bus stops in a uh, small community. So uh, it's amazing what you can do from the things that you can download from the toolkit, but also contacting us as well about the projects that you're doing because we can help you out if you need a larger size file. Also, um, just to talk about One Safe Place, and I might have a photo of them coming up next, um, is um, they had, they're doing their own No More campaign with their own local celebrities. So they got the police chief and the mayor and the town librarian and the leader of the um, Great Crisis Shelter and Domestic Violence Shelter, and they recreated um, this poster that you see of Mariska here with the faces of people in their own hometown. So you could do that with members of, you know, if you can talk your brass into it or your CEO, you know, you can make your own No More poster with your own local celebrities um, that people will recognize. It doesn't have to be someone that's on television. In fact, we encourage people on the local level to do that. Um, I just wanted to show you some pictures of some of our folks in the military that have posted photos to our gallery as well as our social media. Um, I believe the guys on the right-hand side photo are from Louisiana. I could be wrong. If you happen to be on the webinar, please feel free to correct me in the public chat box. Um, but we wanted to say thank you. We'd love seeing people in uniform, um, you know, saying no more and supporting the cause. Here's our blog post about the Marines in Barstow. Shout out to you guys and ladies uh, who uh, had a No More 5K, uh, I believe that was last year, last summer, and uh, to raise awareness about the issue. And they also had a little bit of fun. The picture was kind of small, but after the race, they all put on teal boas with their families uh, and took photos and posted it on social media to, to bring attention to the issue. So you can read more about that on our blog, on our website. Um, here's some more photos. I wanted to thank um, these individuals. Um, down at the bottom, that is actually the Howard University ROTC cadets. They had a day where they were doing training um, about domestic violence and sexual assault, and so they made a No More campaign, and they made their own bags uh, to carry. So um, thank you so much if anybody's on from the Howard ROTC or any ROTC program. It just goes to show you know, No More can be anywhere. Um, we've actually had uh, people who were deployed um, uh, posting photos to our gallery from different parts of the world and were actually recently contacted by a military base in Italy who would like to do a um, No More campaign in Italy. So I hope you're on um, or get to see this. Um, we're very excited about uh, people also doing these campaigns overseas. Um, just a quick uh, quote here from Stacey Johnson, who's a partner of ours and spoke last year. We did a briefing in Washington. Um, she works at the Defense Intelligence Agency about why she wanted to work in the No More campaign and about how it was such an easy and visible way to increase the DIA's awareness of interpersonal violence. And they, they personalized the campaign to show that they um, their leadership was engaged in these issues at the Department of Defense. So, Sissy, I don't know if you're on, but a big shout out to you and DIA for the work that you've done. And I believe that they have some activities coming up uh, for Sexual Assault Awareness Month in April. So, you might want to check out um, uh, the DIA's, they do have a social media page, I believe, as well as their website uh, to see the things that they're doing with their SARC team at DIA. So, thank you, Stacy. Okay, so what is next? Um, share this information with your peers. You can share um, the recording of this. You can share a website. You can show the slides to your peer groups. If you can bend the ear of some of the brass or you know, upper level management or your CEO, please do. And also reach out to family support operations. Um, they might be interested in working with you on doing an event or an activity or showing the PSAs. Um, or providing materials um, in their offices. So, you know, talk with those that you know are interested in talking about these issues and start your own little team or big team to figure out what you can do. Um, you know, look for local events and activities where you can use the No More tools, the PSAs and posters, 
Um, you know, uh, there's a big reminder here at the bottom that April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and it's coming up in a couple of weeks pretty quickly. Um, and I guarantee you that no matter where you are, um, there are activities going on around Sexual Assault Awareness Month with your local rape crisis centers and your local state coalitions against sexual assault. So if you're, you know, don't have the capacity to create your own activities, you can certainly contact those local organizations. You can find them on our website. You can even just Google them. Um, you can just Google Rape Crisis Center in the town that you're in and it should pop up with information and contact them and say, what are you doing for sexual assault? How can me, uh, my peer group, my base, my installation, how can our office get engaged with what you're doing? It doesn't have to be about no more either. If you don't like the symbol or you don't like the no more toolkit after you download it and don't think it's for you, that's okay too. We can get involved in what's going on on the local level. And don't don't think that any event is too small. Um, we've had some campus organizers, some college students saying, well, we have a fundraiser and we only raised $300 for our local rape crisis center. And we're like, $300 is a lot of money that can help a lot of survivors that can really help those organizations. So even if it's just for a couple of hours that you have people taking photos for the gallery or making their own posters and tacking it up on the wall of a break room or a public space, don't feel that that event is too small. It's huge. You may have people come forward who are survivors who need assistance, uh, and Kenny is going to talk in a minute about what resources are available. Um, you may actually inspire someone to get involved and talk about it with uh, their platoon or with their own family or their church group or their own children, um, So, or talk with you know their friends who might be deployed overseas. So just know that no event is is small. Um, speaking up as an individual is huge, um, and bringing a group together is just as important. As I promised, uh, here's our email address, info at nomore.org. We promise to respond as fast as we can um, in getting you information and answering your questions. As I said, a lot of information is available on our website, but sometimes it's hard to find, so if you can't find something, or if you have questions about using the tools, feel free to ask us. Um, once again, No More is an open platform. The reason why we put the toolkit and our logo and our posters all online for you to download for free is that you don't need our permission. You can move forward with whatever you decide to do. We want to know about it because we want to brag about you and we want to talk about the things that you're doing. Um, so please let us know. You can email us. You can post to our social media. But we would really love to have you all engaged with the No More campaign. There's a lot of wonderful things that are coming up throughout the year. Um, with Sexual Assault Awareness Month. October, of course, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. You'll probably get a lot of information from the Resource Center in Kenya um, later on in the year about uh, October. Um, but really, the No More campaign can be used throughout the year, and we encourage you to, you know, be creative. Um, you don't have to have a 5K. Like I said, you can just post a picture to the gallery, but we really would love to have everyone engaged. And so I know Kenya has some really important resources, so I'm going to turn it back over to you so you can talk about those resources. All right, great. Thanks, Jill. So I'm going to close out this screen um, and bring up the resources slide. So you'll see that in a second. And I just want to take a few moments just to highlight some of the resources that we have available um, that discuss the intersection of the military and domestic violence and sexual assault. So these resources are not exhaustive in terms of other organizations that are also um, organizing, uh, doing research, and building collaborations um, with m various military installations across the U.S. as well as overseas. But I do want to highlight some that I think could be particularly helpful um, to building just kind of a basic education and knowledge base as well as um, having a better understanding of how the military um, works with civilian programs to address these issues. So some of the first things that we have available are our special collections. Um, and with our special collections, we have them available on bonnet.org, and we have a wide range of special collections. And they are very well organized, peer-reviewed lists of resources and information on a particular topic. So our special collections include uh, links to videos, training materials, curricula, 
handouts, research documents, um, and just a wide range of information on a particular topic to help um, build your education base on this issue. So we have one that focuses on domestic violence in the military to help encourage working across dif different disciplines. And then we also have one that explores sexual violence in the military. And I just want to say thank you to Stephanie in the public chat because she also brought up the uh, documentary, The Invisible War, and I posted in the public chat the link to a handout that we helped put together um, a few years ago for some of the screenings that were hosted uh, by No More when the documentary initially came out. And so there are links to some ongoing information about what's been happening with the military to address uh, military sexual trauma and sexual assault that takes place in the military. And there's been a lot of significant strides that have happened over the past few years. So please take an opportunity to look at both of these special collections and browse through them to find information that will be really helpful to you. Um, and you'll note that we also address female service members and veterans um, in this, in these special collections. Okay. So now, okay, looks like I may be back on. Um, so now we also have a technical assistance question of the month. And so I wanted to pull out the TA questions of the month that address issues related to the military. Um, throughout the year, in conjunction with the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, we also put together various TAQs. And so some of the ones that relate to the military, this one says, what do I need to know about women in the military, even if I don't work on a military installation? We also have one, which I think someone had posted earlier in the public chat, that they were looking for information related to veterans and those struggling with um, post post-traumatic stress disorder, and possibly with traumatic brain injury as a result of serving in the military. So we have a TAQ that talks about that. And then we also have one, again, that talks about addressing sexual violence within the military. So these are really short blog posts that are great to read, but they're also power packed with some great information and just gives you um, a quick analysis of these particular issues. I wanted to make sure to share some survivor resources. Um, and I know that sometimes when trying to address issues of domestic violence and sexual violence within the military, that they, it can be a little bit confusing sometimes um, and because a lot of it depends upon um, the status of the victim as well as the offender, whether they're enlisted, in the reserves, active duty, et cetera. Um, sometimes it depends upon where the assault takes place whether it's on base or at on, um, off post housing or um, things like that. And so there are a lot of factors that may come into play, but we always want to encourage everyone to reach out to all resources that are available to you, um, as well as to dependents who are impacted by domestic violence and sexual assault within the military. So one of the great resources is safehelpline.org. And you can see here um, that we have a link to the website, but then you can also call or text to seek out information and services and support. I know they also have um, limited online public chat as well, or online private chat um, as well that's available at various times during the day. But you can always click or call 24-7 to receive access and support for those affected by sexual assault in the military. Also, some of our civilian resources that are available is, of course, the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, and again, they're available 24-7, 365 days of the year. You can call or text, and then online secure chat is available as an option as well. Um, I wanted to point out that Women's Law, which is a project of the National Network to End Domestic Violence, they have a great listing of resources related to the military. So you can find out different things about the law as it relates to addressing uh, domestic violence and sexual assault within the military, as well as other options that may be available, available to you as a civilian if that's the route that you want to take. Um, so definitely please check that out. As we know, we have a lot of service members that are overseas, and so a great resource is Americans Overseas Domestic Violence Crisis Center, um, and they also, again, are available 24-7 via phone, and then they have limited, public chat, um, limited live chat available as well from 9 to 4 um, Pacific time. So please check that out as a resource 
um, as well. So I just wanted to make sure and just highlight a few of those resources. They should also be available um, as a PowerPoint handout um, through one of the links that was sent to you in the email. So please download these resources, go online and check them out. And then also just make sure that you are able to share these, share these resources with anyone that may be in need or just have questions about it. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, I was going to switch over, but now I've been kicked out of iLink. Um, so, but that's okay because we're towards the end of our segment of our presentation. So, Emma, I don't know if you saw any questions in the public chat that you want to pose to Jill for our listeners. I know one of the questions I saw had to do with addressing campus sexual assault. So, Jill, I don't know if you can speak to that in any way um, about any more specific activities or planned activities that No More is doing related to campus sexual assault. And Jill, you may be on oh, mute. If you're, yeah. Oh, there you go. I was on mute. I do apologize for that. Um, yeah, so we have been engaged um, with, like I said, over 100 campuses that are doing um, no, no More campaigns. Um, and it's anything from holding bake sales to rallies to um, doing our art installations um, with the No More posters. Um, we've also had, um, you know, like I said, we've had the ROTC get engaged with doing education. Um, there's also been a lot of education with the Greek community, um, with the sororities and fraternities, um, and a lot of the campuses are working on doing um, educational sessions for incoming freshmen. Uh, a lot of those campuses are required. Uh, and we are seeing this week and then a following week that some of the, um, the campuses are actually hosting um, ironically, uh, the uh, Hunting Ground um, documentary that's coming out about campus sexual assault. So it's a great way to get involved in those issues as well. Um, someone just asked a question about um, is there going to be new PSAs coming out soon? We are working on the No Moss campaign. I do assume that there will be video PSAs as well as posters about the No Moss campaign. We're working with um, a research group right now that is um, surveying the Latina community in many aspects, both English-speaking and non-English, uh, or primarily Spanish-speaking communities, about what that campaign would look at like. And we're working, we'll be working with a marketing firm that works directly with the Spanish-speaking communities. Um, so that will be coming out later this year. I can't give you a date. I'm sorry. That all depends on the research and making sure that we have the right campaign tools. And then we also, whenever we have a campaign come out, we do focus groups and market research to make sure that we're getting the right message out there. Um, there may be groups such as Joy for Heart Foundation and other organizations that are creating their own No More Campaign PSAs. Um, like I said, the group in Shaft is one group that I like to talk about. Um, they've created their own video PSA that's airing on their local television and cable network stations. So um, there are campaigns out there that are created by local groups, and we, we do encourage that as well. You can create your own. Uh, so that is the, the No Moss campaign. Um, and certainly some of our colleges have um, done some. I see that somebody put a link in there uh, for St. Mary's College of Maryland, um, how they're using No More. So, um, we definitely um, have things that are coming out both for, on the national level, but also on the local levels. Great. Uh, and, oh, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. I was going to say another question um, related was about the research for the outcomes of the No More campaign. Um, do you want to say anything about that? Yes, we're actually working with some members of um, our steering committee about how do we evaluate, um, you know, the, the effectiveness of the No More campaign, which is super hard if you've worked on awareness campaigns and prevention campaigns before. It's super hard to be able to determine, you know, do people know more about sexual assault and domestic violence because of No More? Um, so we are working on the evaluation process. I know that through working with some of our partners, especially one in six, they've seen a huge increase in the number of people who visit their website and also who contact their um, hotline uh, after the PSAs air. So we use some of, the, some of that data to show that you know, there is increased awareness. People are coming to the No More website. You know, after the Super Bowl, people went to YouTube. So we're seeing that people are engaging at least um, uh, on a social media level as well as calling hotlines. We're working with 
brain as well as the national hotline to see the increases in their um, hotline when the PSAs air, uh, especially on national television. And then I know some local groups are doing some evaluation of what's happening on the local level. So hopefully we'll have some great data come out in the next year of what people have evaluated um, the No More campaign both on an individual agency basis but also um, on a local level as well. It's really hard to evaluate on a national level, but uh, since we don't actually get grant funding or foundation funding, so uh, those things cost a lot of money. So we're trying to figure out ways to partner with someone to help with a national level evaluation at the same time really supporting the local folks who are doing evaluation on the local level, which kind of gives you a lot more detail about that specific community. Great. Um, and I know that you had already talked about some of the other PSAs that might be coming out. Um, do you want to say anything else about any other um, key program uh, PSAs that may be coming out? Someone posted about having um, videos that talk about therapists or creating okay. webinars for therapists to attend to address therapy with survivors. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of resources out there, especially from our partners. Um, the Resource Center is a great place. Um, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center as well um, has great uh, information in working with survivors. They're kind of the experts on the therapy level uh, when it comes to that, so check out their websites. Um, and look at some of the information that they have. And I know, Kimmy, I know you and the Resource Center often have webinars for different levels of uh, individuals. And also some of our national groups have great information as well. So we will um, try to get more information to you um, about those webinars or online resources. Absolutely. Thanks, Jill. And I'm also just posting in the public chat that one of the best ways to obtain training related to domestic violence and sexual assault is really to connect with your local program. Um, and I posted a link for Bonnet to take a look at your state coalition's website and then find the local training or the local program in your area. Most domestic violence and sexual assault programs do a wide range of outreach and public awareness events in the um, in their community, so there are always trainings and speaking events and other ways that you can connect with those programs in order to learn more about domestic violence and the various opportunities to help intervene or prevent domestic violence. Um, another great tool as well, and I'm going to post here in the public chat, if you go to our um, if you go to our Domestic Violence Awareness Project website, we also have some basic tools there, and I'm posting the link. It's nrcdv.org slash dvam, and that's our Domestic Violence Awareness Project website. And we have a basic e-learning module that's about one hour that anyone can take to help explore the complexities of domestic violence and really help educate yourselves about domestic violence. And then you can also um, find some other tools that you can uh, download handouts to do campaigns in your area. You can download artwork that can be shared, um, including a lot of the No More um, logos and symbols. You can also access uh, speaker's guides and other types of information to really help prepare you to speak out publicly about domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, I see this question that says, does the military have a domestic violence website. Um, so Jill, I don't know if you want to respond to that. I have a response for that. Do you want me to go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so um, if you go to, and let me just pull up the website. The, if you go to this special collection um, that's listed here in the resources, I'm pulling the slide back up on the screen. Um, you'll see some resources that are uh, provided through the military. Uh, for most of them, if you go to their family advocacy program, um, that's where they may have some resources for domestic violence. Um, but it's typically not necessarily spelled out in that way. It primarily talks about providing services for families that may um, be in crisis or have other needs. Um, related to counseling and therapy and things of that nature. You can also check the Military One Source. That's another um, resource that's made available to military families to help them access um, counseling and support services and things like that. But um, I would just check on the FAP, 
the SAPRO and the Military One Source website. And I'm uh, typing that in the public chat now. And then you can also take a look. Not only did I list the special collections, but you can also go here to the DOD Safe Helpline and see what information they have available there to help address sexual, um, sexual assault. So we um, are getting ready to wrap up. I don't know if there are any final questions that we may have. I'll just pause for a second. Um, and Jill, if you have any final comments you want to make, now would be a great time to do that. I just wanted to thank everyone for taking you know, some time out of your busy, busy schedule to come with us today to learn more about Know More. Um, certainly if there's, um, if you have any questions or need to find something on our website or look for a resource, please email us or message us on social media and we'd be glad to help you um, and get resources to you as well as, you know, learn about the things that you're doing um, on your, in, in your office, your base, your installation. Uh, we really would like to hear what folks are doing. It's, it's a huge issue and I know it's hard for a lot of people to talk about and can be very personal and some people can be very defensive. but. It's really wonderful when people get together and support their community and support each other and survivors feel safe to come forward and then other people can you know, stand up and say that we're not going to tolerate these issues in our communities anymore. So I just want to thank you all. I have lots of family members who served in the military. My grandfather served in World War II. My father served in Vietnam. And my, both of my brothers-in-law are in the Air Force and in the Marine Corps. And so I find a very special place in my heart for those of you who are serving our country. So thank you so much. Okay, and we're just, um, I'm just going to leave the public chat up for a second. Folks are clarifying um, around SAPRO and um, uh, FAP. And yes, it, you are correct that SAPRO is, is strictly for sexual assault. Um, and then Family Advocacy Program, FAP, would typically address domestic violence. I was just listing all of the resources there. I wasn't saying that SAPRO also addresses domestic violence. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, and for anyone that would like a letter of participation, um, you can do one of two things. You can use the email that was sent to you um, as confirmation for participating in this uh, webinar as proof that you participated, or you can email me, and I will put my email again here in the public chat. You can email me, and I will send you a letter confirming your participation in the webinar. All right, and um, I don't think we have any other questions, so we're going to get ready to wrap up. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate your time, um, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Goodbye.